Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Steve and this is Linux, by the way. A few weeks ago, I made a video on Omarchi, which is DHH's install script on top of Arch Linux, which now has a huge growing community, possibly a conference and much more. And I want to give you my update after running it for a few weeks and where we're at now. So first things first, I installed this on the B-Link SER8. I put a Amazon referral link below. Check that out. It helps the channel a lot. And also like and subscribe if you haven't yet. This particular model has eight cores, 16 threads. It boosts up to 4.9 gigahertz, so plenty of horsepower on the CPU department. It comes with the AMD Radeon 780M graphics, and I'm running the open source drivers there. It does support things like triple monitors and 4K and 120 hertz, but it's not exactly a gaming powerhouse because it is embedded. If you followed along with me in my last video and installed Omarchi, you can now run Omarchi-update. There's a option to just run it, and there's also an option to have a TUI, which is a terminal user interface, so you can navigate all those options. So check that out, just hit super enter, and then you can just type Omarchi update. And I actually updated this before the video, so I'm already on 1.4 and shown you that. However, I did see some cool things. One of the practices they've taken from Ruby on Rails and built into this is the concept of migrations. So as we update, if there's a migration which takes like a shell script or something, it actually summarizes it and automatically runs it for you. So you can see here, uh, it has a copy desktop file, a new matte black theme, Wofi, et cetera, uh, and it will refresh our Waybar config. And so all of the integration was sort of thought out and it's pretty cool And you can see them here. Uh, there's no magic, it's just cell scripts, but it's nice to have all this run for you. And so we'll just go ahead and update this again and we'll say do that. And it's gonna go ahead and update Arch and all our packages. It's going to show that, and you can see it's really nice. It has like these great uh, by default, out of the box color options, very easy to read. And we're just getting a constant stream of updates now. So once you install on Archie, you're still on that awesome Arch rolling release model. So you're just getting constant updates. Everything's the best, newest versions. And uh, so far, so good. It's been working really well. So since I last made the video, I checked the stats last night and there's been 445 commits. So there's a big community building up, lots of development velocity, and every day it just keeps getting better. And if you check out the change log, there's a lot of them listed here. Uh, one of the biggest ones is the menu-based theme switcher. So if I do this, you can see here now I can just choose between these and use my keyboard to do that. And so if I switch to the Grubbox theme, boom, instantly switch themes. And now if I open up my task manager, you can see that that changed. And then if I do this again, and I'll say, I wanna go back to Capuchin, hit the thing here and you can see, yeah, totally different color scheme, everything changed. The bar changed, the background changed, the terminal colors changed, everything just goes in sync. Really nice work. They updated Waybar and they added a collapsible tray. So if you see my mouse and it's in the top right, I'm gonna move it very slowly over here to show you on video. You can see that, boom, there's my Steam, there's my keyboard, and that supports things like Dropbox and Zoom also. And you can see this is my Steam indicator. Uh, that is looking really good. They also added the new Omarchi TUI. So if I fire up a terminal here and type Omarchi, uh, you can see now I can select my theme here and I can install themes and I can put a Git repo in here, et cetera. Uh, that's all good. And for setup here, I can set up my fingerprint sensor just out of the box using this and I can update it. And there's also the manual page and that will just fire this up. And you can see here, so now if I need help on Omarchi, just run that, pop open the manual, and now when I'm like, oh, how do I switch my theme? Boom, click here. And you can see this all loads super fast, very performant. Uh, and then in that case, control shift, super space, boom. And now I can switch and we'll go to Tokyo Night. And there we are. So everything is looking really good from a usability perspective. And one of the points of all this is it's opinionated and it's fast. And that means that if I get a new laptop or a new system, I can install Arch Linux and Omarchi in less than 10 minutes and I'm ready to go and to start developing. Everything just works out of the box and that's been my experience so far. If you followed the original video, we also set up disk encryption, which I highly recommend. And now there's a screen into your password that looks awesome. So previously it was just a text prompt. Now we have a full on Omarchi logo, looks awesome. DHH has continued to put out a flurry of posts and one of them is the Omake's computing and that's chef choice in Japanese. And basically what he's doing is, is he's taking that Ruby on Rails mentality and he's building it into Linux. So if you're like me and you started making web apps back in the day, well, what would happen is you'd make everything from scratch over and over and over again, but everything would look very similar. And so he brought Rails, he brought generators, and everything was very standard and prescriptive and best practice. And that's what we're doing here also. So I'd love to see that in. You can check them all out at omamix.org. And there's a doc trine here and he's talking about why do we go Linux and why do we make these design choices, et cetera. There's a bunch of great things here too, such as moving away from Apple, 
And so you can click this and he goes over tool by tool, the replacements that they've used, such as iCloud to Dropbox and email to Hey, that's what he sells. Uh, and it's actually a cool email program. So I'd recommend you check it out. Uh, photos to Google Photos and notes to Obsidian, things like that. And, and there's a lot of very solid choices there. There's also now a section on whether you should choose Omarchi or Omacube. Uh, I think this is a no brainer for me. I definitely want to run Arch Linux because I have less problems with it. I have a video which is very popular, which just talks about how the Ubuntu installer is broken. Uh, so you can go check that out if you want to, but you could just use Arch, which isn't broken. And with all that, there might also be an Omicon, which is a conference set up by DHH and others with a lot of really cool people, such as Mitchell from Terraform, the Primogen, Tej, Typecraft, all your favorite streamers there. And so this sounds really exciting. I'm looking forward to it. There is a website already up. It doesn't have information yet. It says it might be in 2026. So definitely following this and checking it out. I think I've already said DHH about 15 times in this video, but I'm gonna say it once more. Uh, he was also on the Lex Fridman podcast. So if you check this out, it's six hours talking about the philosophy. Uh, there's some Linux stuff in here. There's some programming stuff in here. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below. You can check that out. With all that, what's my experience been like? Well, I'm recording this desktop right now using OBS and it's working really well. If I do a super T here, I can bring up the task manager and you can see that I'm running very little CPU. So this processor can totally handle recording a 4K screen and encoding that in the fly with the hardware based codecs. And it's working really great for that use case. And I've made a number of screencasts now, really happy with the performance and the stability there. For video today, I'm working on switching to Caden Live. So before I was using Final Cut Pro and I have plugins and I'm very familiar with it, I'm not as familiar with it here. And so I've been doing things like testing the various proxy formats, running things through FFmpeg. Uh, in my case, I have like six audio channels. So I've been trying to split those out and sync them and sort of work through all of those things at once. So hopefully this video is made using Caden Live. I'm gonna see what I can do. I still need some like titles and stuff like that, but I think I can make a serviceable YouTube video with it. And overall it works pretty well. I've also been closely following the Caden Live updates and they have some new AI tools, which I'm excited to try out because this is something that's been missing for a while. Other editing suites have it and they certainly are developing at a very rapid pace. So love to see those improvements week over week. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you like Omarchi? Is there something better out there? Are you still running Windows or Mac OS X or something like that? Or did you go all in and you love it? Uh, there's also the Discord link below. So check that out if you want to get in the Omarchi Discord and have discussions and people can help you debug and create things and all sorts of things. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video. Later.